Hello everyone, this is Lockout S, and welcome to another video in our series covering the DCS World Caucasus map for DCS World. Uh, this is the free map that is included within the base game. Uh, starting off, um, we left off, uh, not last video, but the video before. Uh, off to our no, off to our 11 o'clock here on the ground is Sukumi International Airport. Uh, Gudata Air Base is somewhere off to our right wing, uh, further up the coast. Uh, and there's the town of Sukumi right there. Um, something I wanted to mention, uh, I did actually do a little bit of digging because uh, I wanted to make sure I got the name right at least once in this tour series. Um, this is the area, this area of the world is known as Abkhazia. And it is technically a separate part of Georgia. It's one of those fun stories where Georgia technically owns. I mean, this is te Georgia technically claims this as part of its own, but it's its own actual separate country. Um, partly because of Russia and an invasion they did in 2008, and that 2008 invasion is basic is actually the foundation for a lot of early DCS World content, because uh, that was the uh, big conflict at the time outside of Afghanistan was uh, the Russian invasion of Georgia. Uh, so you definitely have uh, lots of the, like, the earlier campaigns, like especially, I believe like the early SU-25T campaigns revolve around that. Um, the early A-10C campaigns revolve around like the aftermath. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, but anyways, this is technically a separate part of Georgia. Uh, this is technically a separate country from Georgia. Uh, Georgia views it as a separate part, but that's again another whole another story for another day. Uh, we are flying a Georgian uh, L-39C, and the Georgians do fly these, so this is actually a uh, country-correct aircraft. Uh, I'm going to try to phrase that otherwise. Uh, but obviously we're in technically foreign territory, so before we get an igla up the butt, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go as far fast as we can towards the Nguri River. Uh, we're going to actually duck into the mountains up here to the uh, to the north and east. Obviously the Caucasus Mountains are to the east of us uh, and there's the foothills in front of them. But around uh, off to our 9 o'clock, or sorry, not up to our 12 o'clock at a, of a heading of roughly 8 uh, eight. Five degrees or ninety degrees from us, due east, we do have the Nguri River Reservoir. So we're going to take a little bit of a tour of that uh, today. Uh, we're going to go down the Nguri River out to the coast of Georgia, and then we're going to hit up in relatively quick succession all of the Georgian air bases in DCS World. I uh, then we're going to land at. I, I always mix these two up. Uh, Kutaisi. Because um, there's Sanaki on the coast. Towards the coast, rather. So we'll use the... Uh, yeah, that's right. We want we do want to be heading this way. Uh, we have Sanaki on the coast, Kutaisi in the middle, Kobaletti down s further south, and then Batumi. So we're going to go from here, due east, down the river. And then we're going to go down the river, hit up Kobaletti, Batumi, wind back up to uh, Sanaki, and then we're going to land at Kutaisi. And to help you navigate in cockpit this time, uh, the L39C Albatross in DCS World does actually come with the option to include a GPS unit. Uh, this is a separate add-on. Uh, the L39C, the C101 Avio, uh, the C101 um, Aviojet and the Mi8 all have the fun, all have the ability to mount this uh, GPS system as an actual in-game physical mounted uh, device. Uh, I want to say there's maybe one other aircraft that has this mounted now as a separate buy-in, but I don't know uh, what that is. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Um, it is a cool feature. Uh, basically, if you use the mission editor to create a flight plan for your aircraft, it'll automatically populate in here, and then you can use this to navigate to uh, around the maps. 
So yeah. it is a cool feature. It's not... If you fly the trainer aircraft, it's a definitely a cool purchase. Uh, I do believe you can buy it as a standalone module as well. And it'll just appear as sort of like a uh, 2D window off to the side. Um, you can use it like that. Uh, but I prefer using it like this where it's an actual inbuilt module. It's a bit more bit more immersive and for and also for some of the other aircraft you'll be flying uh unless you're flying it as sort of like a civil aircraft in like a modern setting it doesn't make sense to have this gps system for say a world war ii aircraft as like a 2d window and that also kind of ruins the fun and i should mention by the way uh that is the black sea to the rear of us at uh, 4 o'clock. Uh, Black Sea uh, for DCS in this section of the world is good for both actual NATO for both NATO and Russian carrier ops, so you can definitely realistically and reasonably have carrier ops there. Uh, the area in between Georgia and Abkhazia is actually relatively flat um, with some sparse uh, hills and forests and city towns. So you do have some cover for ground op, so it's good for ground operations where you do have some cover, but it's also open enough to actual have actually have the AI engaging ground battles. Uh, lots of small bridges for strike targets. Uh, pretty cool. It's a pretty interesting area to have ground combat in if you want, and also potentially realistic where you can have Russia backed uh, force. You can have Russian supplied forces on one side, and you can have theoretically backed NATO forces on the other. Uh, again, like I said, this is kind of why like. The, uh, in the map today, a lot of these air bases are set up for like NATO aircraft because at the time, like, EDU was kind of, I guess, at the time going off of the idea of like, okay, like this is is a very real possibility that Georgia will join NATO, so we're gonna give all the Georgian airports uh, NATO uh, navigation equipment, uh, so that we can have them operate off of those bases and then uh, have Russian aircraft oper operate uh, further up into the north and west. So there we go. Up ahead and to our right, that is the Anguri River. Um, Anguri River. Uh, obviously, this is the Anguri Reservoir. That's up at the uh, northern or the, the up river quite a, by quite a bit from the other uh, section of the river down below. And we also have the Anguri Dam, ap so aptly named because of the Anguri River that it uh, dams up here to form this reservoir on our nose. Uh, it is modeled in-game. Uh, it is not destructible. Uh, kind of thankfully, because I don't think they they could model... I don't think DCS could handle model, modeling a flood uh, damage or flooding. But the, uh, the damage, like I said, is modeled into the terrain. You'll see it come up on our left side here. And we'll give you guys one more look at it. Right there. A bit of a longer look here. As we make our counterclockwise rotation around it. Or counterclockwise counter orbit around it. Now I do like to in a lot of my uh, in a lot of my sort of like shell flights or just uh, whenever I'm getting to know a module I do actually like to fly up and down this river. Uh, if you do go further to the right on the Angiri River uh, and past the reservoir there actually are quite a lot of really cool nice and relative even relatively tight um, uh, valleys and valleys and mountain passes that you can actually uh, fly your aircraft into and around. I like to use it because uh, it makes good for it makes for good um, training for navigating like uh, canyons and also even for like low visibility uh, flights whenever you're trying to like use the navigate uh, whenever you're trying to use ground mapping radar to determine like okay is the, do I have enough space in front of me to like navigate or do I need to start climbing out of here all sorts of fun stuff like that. And the Angiri River uh you can fly low on the Angiri River. I would keep in mind that there are power lines and bridges that cross the river. So flying about um, 
couple hundred feet like this up above the river is fine. Um, if you even dive down a little bit, just to give you a feel what it's like flying low, but I do, but I don't want to stay too low for too long because I don't want to risk nuking myself or crashing into some wires on a video that's going to be quite long. It is quite late when I'm recording this, so I would like to get to bed. But there we go. See some really it is really it is really cool to fly this low. I'm not gonna lie, especially like on a river like this. So we did enough low uh, flying here. We're just gonna get a little bit of altitude, so we're not like gonna completely run into something. Add a little bit of power. Can't push this jet too hard because it will. It's it, I think. I know with the C-101, it's, it, it's a trainer aircraft. Its engine will blow if you push it too hard for too long. Not 100% certain with the L-39, but we're not going to risk that. And like I mentioned before, another one of those, um, another one of very many uh, rail bridges and uh, power lines there, which are which can be very deadly in DCS because you don't see them sometimes until they're right in front of you. But yeah, um, lots of cool uh, with those bridges um, across this river. Lots of cool opportunities for strike flights, um, even like uh, especially if you're trying to do iron bombing. Um, I know Ian Christie did a video recently about, uh, he was talking about, um, iron bombers in World War, uh, in the Korean War, rather, and about how they're, like, one of their primary targets were, um, bridges later on in the war. Got another, uh, road bridge. Lots of bridges, lots of islands here. Um, keep in mind that if you, for you mission designers out there, so I try to center my view, off to your right-hand side, of this uh, river going downstream uh, to the north and west, that is very much that is uh, territory of uh, Abkhazia, and off to your left, to the south and east, is Georgian territory. So you can use that sort of to like uh, you can definitely have like missions where you use the borders of this river, or just even rough borders of this river, rather to uh, set up triggers where like. Since I'm technically right now over, uh, quote unquote, uh, foreign territory as a Georgian pilot, you can have something where, like, if I stay over here for too long, the air defense systems activate and they try to shoot me down, or I technically fail the mission because I violated um, ceasefire agreements or something along those lines. See the uh, you can see that Georgia gets pretty flat. Um, out there is a hill by the uh, I'll point out that hill later on but there is actually a fairly sizable hill that you can use for navigation purposes uh, in the middle uh, towards the coast of Georgia uh, I have no idea what that hill is called uh, but it is actually it's fairly prominent um, in Georgia on this map so you can definitely use that as both cover for strike and seed flights, um, as well as sort of a, as a um, uh, waypoint fix point, I'm sorry, uh, an INS calibration point, we'll call it that. Uh, quite sure it's, a, it's like an INS fix point, like different um, aircraft call different things, but you can use that as one of those 
points that you can fly over and calibrate the INS point in. So, speaking of a different point, you can also use this point up here because this is the end of the Ingiri River, and up ahead is the Black Sea. Um, like I said, you can have plenty of carrier ops here for Russian and NATO aircraft. Uh, I do believe that actually, I think one of the free Russian, uh, one of the campaigns you get with the SU-33 has the um, Kuznetsov actually out here somewhere, right around here, um, sailing around uh, and launching the uh, flanker Ds for operations actually going inland. But now that we're past the Anguri River, um, next river coming up is the uh, Rioni River. Uh, uh, the Rioni River is actually near a fairly sizable coastal town called Poti. And it also, the Rioni River kind of forms a little bit of a delta right around a tri uh, triangular island that is fairly famous in DCS for being a popular bombing range. And in fact, uh, there will be a video coming out soon where I actually use that island as a bombing range for... Um, testing out the various dumb, uh, dumb and unguided ordnance in DCS world. So, if you can see it off in the distance off my nose, it looks like there's a little bit of gray and like white. Um, that is a city, and that is the city of Potty coming up. Or Poti. I think it's pronounced Poti. Oh. English is fun. Yeah, you can see there uh, that sh uh, what looks like it's like a, a shiny, uh, like silvery surface. That is actually the river. So that is actually the uh, uh, Rioni. Oh yeah, Rioni River comes up here, comes off our nose, and there's the triangle. There's that triangular island I was talking about that is a fairly popular bombing range in DCS for this map. Um, I should also mention that the Rioni River. If you follow it eastward, it'll actually take you past uh, Sanaki and um, Kobaletti air bases. So you can use the Rioni River uh, to navigate towards the vicinity of those air bases, and then you can use uh, visual aids to, uh, and then you can actually use your eyes and then navigate onto those air bases. And right now we're over Poti, uh, po yeah, Poti, Poti, Poti. I think it's Poti. I think Poti sounds more uh, sounds sounds uh, more at least aesthetically pleasing. So Poti uh, is what we're flying over right now. Uh, there's also this lake up here that serves as a fairly common bombing range. Uh, not I didn't manage to look up what the name of this lake is, but I think it it's definitely not a saltwater lake. Uh, I think this is definitely uh, a freshwater lake that's near the coast. Um, but there's all sorts of bombing ranges that use this area around here. Target practice. I do believe that we are now coming up across Kobaletti, which is our first major airbase. Yeah, I'm just using, um, and just double checking settings and stuff because it doesn't. Okay, there we go. So, Kobaletti Air Base, um, it's uh, some of its nearby uh, geographic features you should keep in mind. It's, it's quite forested out here. Um, it's quite forested out here. There is actually a small ridge that does, pro uh, does protect it off to its north and um, eastern side over there. I can visually ID it. Should be should be coming across it very soon. Um, there's a little bit of a square lake in front of it, which is also how you can easily identify it. 
And Kobo Eddie does actually have um, a Takan. And it does actually have one runway heading out toward, uh, I believe it's runway either 0405 or 06. Um, it's, def it's a northeast heading on the runway. And the Takan and that has an ILS beacon out heading towards, pointing out towards the ocean. So. One of the run one of the runways has the ILS beacon, and would you know it? There's Kobaletti down below. Um, I like to use Kobaletti. I like to fly out of Kobaletti. Uh, it's not. It's sort of centrally located, um, but it's a small enough air base that it's like it's easy to navigate around, quick to na uh, quick to like uh, taxi to the runway, but it still has a TACAN beacon, still has a ILS beacon, uh, but it's also not again. Not that's also not. Uh, a super crowded, super big airport that takes forever to taxi around. Um, plus, it does also have um, some of these larger pads here that you can support larger aircraft. Um, and it has a decent number of these hardened aircraft shelters. Uh, not a, not a, obviously a lot, but there is actually quite a lot of parking spaces for DCS aircraft in here. Plus, you have that giant ramp um, right here that you can use to set up in uh, Cold Star Aircraft there as well. So it is a pretty cool air. Uh, like I said, it's, my, it's actually my favorite airport in DCS to use for training flights. Um, especially if I'm learning an aircraft for the first time, I'll just plop it down here and I'll use this to like familiarize myself with the systems and navigate. Um, like I said, uh, there is a TAC amp. Uh, before I head up, there is a TAC amp beacon here and the you can get the num runway number heading off the runway here. It is runway 07. So runway 07 is the runway that actually has the ILS beacon. So your Mirage 2000 seat, your Mirage aircraft, um, F-16, A-10, the hopefully to be released soon, if not already released, um, F-15 Strike Eagle should have ILS. So. You can definitely use that air base for lots of uh, really cool ops for navigation and general NATO combat. But that's actually the cool thing about that airport behind us is it's actually not the real life Kobaletti Airport. Um, that airport back there is I forget the name. Um, it's actually called in real life Mir uh, Miraja Airport, and it's actually not a military airport in any stretch of the imagination. Um, it looks like in real life it's just like a civilian like grass strip almost, uh, but it has a similar uh, airport. It has a roughly similar uh, layout to the to a Kobaletti in the game, uh, but it's in no way, shape, or form. Um, it's not Co It's not even called Kobaletti Airport in the real world. Um, it's not even a military air, military air base, but it is still pretty cool. Um, it's one of those air bases they probably added in because they really needed to have. Uh, more Georgian air bases. But up ahead here, um, believe it or not, the what was once known on Google Maps as the world's most bombed airport uh, is a the actual Kobaletti Airport. Um, this cross here is very famous in the DCS World community as the most bombed spot in DCS World because of all the various um, bombing ranges as well as practice missions that use this uh, concrete X as a giant X marks the spot for target practice, especially because this is the free map and not the paid version, uh, not the paid NTT, NT, NTTR map that would otherwise serve as that kind of function, serve the functionality. And the town we are flying over is actually the town of Kobaletti itself. So there you go. There's actual Kobaletti, and there's the actual IRL Kobaletti International Airport. Or well, it's not even an international airport. It's just Kobaletti Airport, and it doesn't even really look like it's really in use in real world. It's one of those um, very rustic, very rough looking airports. Um, it kind of does look like in real life it was not even, not bombed to back and forth, but it looks like it was kind of abandoned and it looks really rough. Um, but it is actually in the real world and if you go and if you go on Google Maps uh, right now, uh, the website for that airport is digitalcombatsimulator.com. So and you'll also find a lot of us uh, DCS World people have put a lot of funny um, Google uh, Google Earth reviews on that map for DCS World. Um, 
kind of sort of as an homage to this game, because um, I don't think the real life airport really is getting a lot of usage. It's uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they use it for like RC aircraft or something like that. It's kind of a sad state of affairs, but eh, it is what it is. Um, something I should mention as we head towards Batumi, uh, believe it or not, uh, while also doing a little bit of research on this map in this area, uh, this is technically a separate part of Georgia, although this is actually a part of Georgia, and it, um, they recognize themselves, I guess, as a part of Georgia, but it's like sort of an independent uh, republic within it. Uh, this is the independent uh, state uh, republic of Ajara, or Ajara, yeah, I think it's um, Ajara, and it basically consists more or less of the entire town of Batumi. Um, so this area right here uh, is that little uh, May Republic, and once you cross this river up ahead, which is known as the uh, Choroki, Choroki River, um, the Cherokee River up ahead here, uh, once you pass that, that is pretty much Turkey up ahead. And I do believe if you head um, more or less dead south of here, you're going to run into uh, Inserlik Air Base, which is modeled in DCS Syria. So, you actually, it is actually pretty crazy that actually with our current fuel state, if that was modeled in game, we could probably reach Inserlik just out that way, out in front of us, on our nose. Uh, there really isn't much modeled, by the way, to our left in DCS World, and that is kind of accurate to our world. Uh, there really isn't much out that way, uh, other than some really scenic flying through the ma uh, mountains. Um, and this is another spot that I like to do for more of a more challenging uh, route for uh, mountain and uh, river flying in DCS along the uh, Churuki uh, River. Uh, but it is also, however, not well modeled, and like, all the all the territory out to the east of here really isn't all that well modeled in DCS. Um, partly because in real life there really isn't much out there, anyways, but also partly because DCS is just just flat out doesn't model it. I want to come back to a relatively famous, another famous airport in DCS world, um, and this is uh, Batumi International. Uh, it is fairly famous in DCS world, um, partly because a lot of, uh, tutorials all, in addition to Kovaletti, um, Batumi International here is the home of a lot of tutorials in-game. Um, so many a DCS aviator's starting career has started off to this apron off to the side here. Um, of note, Batumi International, uh, it also has an ILS beacon pointing towards um, the ocean. So that would be the reciprocal of this runway heading that we're going flying down now. Uh, it has its own TACAN beacon. Uh, of note though with Batumi, Interna uh, Batumi International, uh, you're best to use runway, um, let's see here, this would be runway 13. Uh, runway 13 has the ILS beacon and also at the end of runway 13 is the only two taxiways to get to the apron. So your best bet with Batumi International is to always land on runway 13 and then always take off on the reciprocal because that's where the uh, that's where the uh, actual taxiways to and from the apron are. Uh, there aren't a lot of whole lot of spots here in um, Batumi to actually spawn in at. Um, but there are a few, um, and also it is kind of out of the way, so you can definitely have, like, smaller missions here, uh, you can have sort of, like, a value, you can have, like, a more civil flights out of this area, or you can even use this as sort of, like, a, just a spot for, like, the start of a chill flight. And it is, like, a nice homely little airport, it's not a super long, long runway, so you do want to be careful landing on it if you're heavily loaded, about, but you can use this runway for... Refueling and rearming, in addition to Kovaletti's airport to rearm and refuel whenever you're doing bombing ranges on the Concrete X. That is the actual real life Kovaletti airport.
All right, so we're going to push our throttles quite a bit up, and we're going to try to make our way up the coast. Because we have two more airports to hit up before we end this video. And mercifully, both of those air bases, Sanaki and uh, Kobaletti, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Sanaki and Kutaisi are actually fairly close together, so it won't be too far um, of a flight in between the two once we get to that general area. Uh, I will mention one last thing before we head out. Um, well, there does well, the uh, Batumi does look like it has a port. Um, I don't think you can actually. The port is actually very shallow, so you're not going to be able to get a whole lot of uh, DCS ships in that port. Um, just something to keep in mind. And this area in general, um, there really isn't a whole lot for like ground combat. Uh, a build, like abilities, there's a lot of forest, a lot of mountains, a lot of trees. But it would be cool for like um, infantry and just even just like again like for like this like chill flights where you're just basically sort of like chilling, flying by the mountains, possibly doing operations further up into Georgia. Right there gives you gives you a little bit of time to get the aircraft up, get the systems all ready for combat once you head over to the northern parts right there. Do believe that light up on our dash means that our external, um, not our external tanks. The uh, the light on the dashboard means that there's actual fuel in these um, little uh, these little pods on the ends of the wings actually do contain fuel, and that's just an indicator of light telling us that those uh, pods are actually empty. Um, L39 is a little bit weird, by the way, in terms of how its fuel tanks drain. I'll obviously go when I. I do proper tutorials on this, I'll explain this a little more in detail, but um, this fuel counter here doesn't count the fuel in those little uh, very wingtip tanks. So we just need to go down here to turn that off somewhere. And there we go. Yeah, it has no real effect in DCS, but in real life you would want to do that um, so you don't burn out the uh, fuel pumps because otherwise they'll be pumping air and pumping nothing, and that just causes so many problems. It's getting late. Uh, late night recording for me, but wouldn't think of a better place to spend it than just doing a, just doing a chill flight. And one of my favorite um, it's not like a it's not my not a, like a, not like a combat aircraft, but one of my favorite um, fun kicking around aircraft, um, just flying around, scooping out maps with it, lots of fun. Ready to get back on course.
And as you can see, now we're starting to get back into the um, the plains that are in between the Caucasus Mountains to the north of us. And I'm not quite sure what the mountain range is to the south of us. I do, I want to say it's the Anatolia range. Um, I think the, the Anatolian um, mountain range is the one that runs through Turkey. So we're in between these two mountain ranges and there's a whole lot of um, flat farmland and plains here. As we're navigating through these. I do believe that this is again the uh, Rioni River uh, because we are approaching Kutaisi Air Base off our. Let's see here. I think it's, it would be off our left wing at eight or nine o'clock. There it is. So, sorry, Sanaki Air Base. So Sanaki um, Kolki is the official name of the airbase. It is actually in, uh, this actually is a real life airbase uh, in, the, in uh, the real world. However, I think it's abandoned. So it's one of those things where like, yeah, it kind of exists. And I think it's one of those uh, places that it, theor I mean, it theoretically could be used as an airbase. It seems like it's at least decently well maintained as one but it doesn't really, I believe, serve that function currently. It might just be like a reserve base or something they just have set up for emergencies or whatever. Um, in DCS world, as opposed to uh, fictional, as opposed to the real world, um, it is actually a functioning air base in DCS world. Um, all those hangars down there, or there's plenty of parking space of all those hangars down there. Um, also, there's plenty of parking spaces on this ramp here and you also have lots of pla lots of exits and on ramps onto the actual air base with um, on the taxiway there uh, i do believe that there is also an I I, um, ils channel there's an ils uh beacon set up over here as well as i think i mentioned before definitely there's also definitely a tac and system here um snaki has a i guess uh it's a pretty good air base also to use uh, for training operations and uh for any general basic uh, DCS operations, just because of the sheer amount of um, spots to actually spawn an aircraft here, I do, and I do believe um, Sanaki also. I think I remember Sanaki being also used for some training missions. I know that the uh, AJS thirty seven Vigan. Uh, I do believe the Vigan tutorials are set up here, right around um, on this ramp up here. So, uh, it is a it is a fairly commonly used air base in DCS world for operations like that, um, and we're gonna do one more air base uh, that we're and the one we're gonna land at is Kutaisi. Now Kutaisi has um, a little bit more um, uh, space on its air base. Um, Sanaki unfortunately doesn't really have space for larger aircraft. Um, Kutaisi does. Um, but it's a little bit further inland, uh, and it's a little bit of an odd layout. Uh, it's like there's like there's a lot of spaces, but there's kind of a bit of an odd layout. Um, some of the larger spots are sort of um, off to the side, uh, but you can definitely uh, still use it. And it's and I actually like to use um, Kutaisi Air Base for. Uh, launching AWACS aircraft out of just because it's, it's it is one of the few air bases on this side of Georgia that can um, actually properly have the AI taxi out to the runway and use it and land at it. Because um, in case you didn't know, if the a if you command an AI aircraft to land at an airport that's too small for it, it'll attempt it'll basically attempt to start the uh, landing. And then as soon as it basically touches wheels down, it'll just despawn. So keep that in mind when doing mission creation. Uh, certain air, uh, larger aircraft need larger parking spaces in order to actually like taxi around on the ground to give a bit more of a realistic feel, because um, otherwise they will just disappear. And you can see the Caucasus map off our nine o'clock. And 
we're going to end the video uh, once we land at uh, Kutaisi up here. Um, if you go on uh, next video, we're going to cover um, the we're going to cover uh, the Tbilisi area via helicopter, and then I do believe I'm going to actually add in one more video where I'm going to actually talk actually talk about a little bit about the Caucasus region, the actual Caucasus uh, mountains. Uh, there are actually two spots that I want to hit out in particular on a mini tour of that area, but we're going to be talking about um, the various uh, passes that you can use in game to set up uh, different missions. So definitely, we definitely have a little bit further to go on the Caucasus map before we call it the tour quote unquote complete, but. We're making pretty good progress throughout this map. Um, I'm not quite sure what the next map is. Um, Sinai might be released by the time uh, that comes out. If that's the case, I'll probably be releasing um, in-depth Sinai videos. But before we get there, let's go over uh, Kobaletti Air Base here. Uh, Kobaletti Air Base uh, in real life is absolutely 100% abandoned as an air base. Um, this northern terminal up here and this area up here does actually exist in real life, um, but they use it more for like a. It's definitely at this point more of a civilian airport um, with a ban with uh, abandoned um, parking spaces and hang uh, hardened shelters for uh, military aircraft still laying around. So it is one of those things. It is an interesting airport where it was an ex-military airport. Um, and like all the military uh, hardened shelters and revetments and embankments that were probably set up and created during the Soviet times for the Soviet Air Force to house their aircraft, they still exist in real life, but it's all abandoned. And um, I don't know if you could explore it. That would be pretty cool um, for like an urban exploration trip, but I'm quite sure it's one of those things where various governments on so many levels don't want you there you're not going to really get the chance to explore unless you uh, do so quietly. But um, what you can do here in DCS is uh, there's a bit of parking space on that ramp there, a bit of parking space on that ramp there underneath my left wing. Um, lots of, um, we also have those uh, revetments on the southeast, so the north southwest and northeast of Kobaletti Air Base. I can remember to turn. They start slowing down the aircraft. Uh, those actually can house uh, the larger tanker and AWACS aircraft. Uh, there's also quite a lot of parking space on this southern ramp here. I don't remember if they are AIF. Um, the southern ramp here has slots for AI aircraft, but you can definitely use uh, players' um, ground star air slots right there. So Kobaletti does have a lot of parking spaces, um, like uh, Sanaki, uh, but its main advantage is that it has uh, spots for larger aircraft. Also, I should probably mention, this also again does have ILS and TACAN, so you can use your NATO aircraft here to navigate and land at this air base. So we're gonna, um, Make our downwind leg here. So downwind leg here to for our final landing. Um, I am more familiar with the L39, so and the MiG-21, so this should hopefully go fairly well. It's got our proper downwind heading. There it is. Want to reduce that. Get out the break out, bring out the air brake a little bit. Okay. Still flying a little bit fast for flaps. Kick out the gear, get some more drag. Oh, now that I think about it, hold on. 
There we go. There we go. Um, I think the last time uh, that I flew this aircraft, um, and the and the current uh, uh, in this flight, I do believe that DCS did reset the um, control flight controls. So I was hitting the flight control on my stick for the air brakes, and they weren't coming out. And I'm wondering like, what's going on? And I realized, oh, that's probably what's going on. Hey, the uh, they uh, they wait the controls again. Which is something you are going to have to keep in mind. That is something that does happen in DCS. Not super often, but often enough to be a pain. Okay, so we really flew downwind from that airbase. That's fine. We'll just go in for a long final. On the base leg. After we finish our base leg turn. Flying nice and slow. Add a bit of trim. Took just enough fuel for this flight today. Uh, we're at, I believe, just under 200 liters of fuel, which is kind of a little. We're, we're getting pretty light on on gas. Obviously, we can we'll have enough to land, but uh, and even if we had to make a couple of uh, go around attempts, we'll have plenty of gas for that. But still, um, we use quite a lot of the gas, which is good because that means um, we we'll use quite a bit of the gas of the uh, gas. Should come in fairly light so we can stop fairly quickly. We're coming out where our approach is a little high. Cutting power. Power. Yeah, this is a bit of a messy approach. Okay, there we go. Landing a little bit late for touchdown, but there we go. Nice. Gentle touchdown. Tap the brakes. And we're just gonna roll out for the remainder. Till we get towards the end, so that way we're not we're not clogging, we're not like slow like slowly taxiing to the end of the runway. So unfortunately one of the uh, Slight downside to Cobaletti is the taxiways are, um, I mean, they're a little bit far out. There's no, like, central taxiway. They're kind of towards the end, which makes sense. But on the other hand, it makes it a little bit difficult for um, ops where, like, sometimes you're, like, you'll land and you'll end up in the dead center of the runway. And you're like, oh, I have to taxi all the way towards the end. So, so there we go. We made it to Cobaletti Air Base um, after our little recon stint in... Um, Abkhazia. So, with that, I'm going to turn back on the pilot body now, because we don't need to hide ourselves. Cut power. And we're going to come to a stop um, sometime soon. There we go. Turn and rotate. You can depressurize the cockpit, open it up, get some fresh air. You definitely see it. You can get some really cool views, by the way. That I will say, um, 
I love to I love flying from the Georgian air bases, and even if I was flying like Russian aircraft, I would like in my mind at least set the time to like the time when um like the, the late seventies or like very early eighties whenever the um whenever the USSR still controlled this area and then fly out from these Russian air bases, um just because of um how they are really pretty. Like you have all these like forested wood area, yeah, like this forested area like right next to the air base where it's like well not super forested but like plenty of trees next to the air base plenty of farmland and then you look at uh you look to the south there's all these um you know, the mountains up there and then you have the bigger bigger mountains up to the north it's like a really scenic area of the world to be in um so i, I always like flying at it um it's one of the main reasons like even though we have all these um fancy maps now um i like i just like the wooded areas and the more wooded and uh mountainous feel of this map compared to most others so okay there we go we're almost there and stop put on the parking brake and that's it so uh next in the next uh, uh episode uh we're going to be touring the uh Tbilisi area and possibly if time permits uh we are going to be heading out into um some of the mountain passes around uh, Georgia and Russia. So until next time, this is Lock OS signing out.